Welcome to the Spirit Pathways podcast. I am Kate Sprickley. Our podcasts offer raw, honest and authentic conversations on a number of topics that we hope you find informative and inspiring. Okay, so thank you for for everyone joining and listening into to today's podcast. It's been a while since I've I've done a podcast. Um, a lot has been happening. Um, for those who don't know, I've recently made the move from South Africa to to British Columbia and Canada. And today I am chatting with my new South African Canadian friend, Jackie Lepro. Um, I met Jackie through uh, fa- on Facebook. You you posted something. It was Facebook, yeah. yeah. You- said something about you had a parcel for your mom and I offered to take it back to Cape Town when I went to go and see my kids and um yeah it was one of those you know you just happened to be in the same place where my mom lived and leaving a couple of days later it was all very perfect yeah it was it was very synchronistic especially when you arrived and asked me what I did and I in my head I was thinking oh I hate that question and And uh, I knew the answer already (laughs) And then you came and had coffee and yeah, we, we hit it off. So I, I'm so happy to to have a friend close by and someone who understands the weird world that we, we live in, or certainly I live in, you live in it yeah. too, you, you get it. I get it. Yeah, you get it. So that's really good. Um, so I just thought, I just thought we, we could have a conversation a little bit about being brave because both Mm -hmm. you and I have done some pretty brave stuff in our lives and I don't know about you but I I often okay I do think about it but you know I don't think about it as being brave I think about it as this is what I'm feeling called to do or this is what I'm being pulled towards and this is what I feel so strongly that that I need to do. There's no concept of like, am I being brave? Do I have the strength? Am I courageous enough? You know, that that doesn't even cross my mind. Um, but being here and and one of the one of the things last week was dry, you know, I'm driving firstly on the wrong side of the road. I'm sitting on the wrong side of the car. I'm driving a car that I don't know. In fact, on roads that I have absolutely no idea where I am and ways likes to take me in all sorts of directions and making sure that I see every part of British Columbia because <laughs> it takes me on the same road. Yeah. So I had to do a very brave thing and come and meet you for coffee and then came and meet you for to see see where you work and 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 have a walk, which was which was wonderful. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, I kind of, I, you know, I thought about that bravery thing as well, because we spoke about it a little bit before. And I agree with you that kind of the doing of the initial thing, there's kind of no question about it. It doesn't feel brave for me to have moved countries a few times or it's what happens afterwards, I think, is where the bravery comes in. It's like, OK, now I've done the big thing. It's all the little things that feel like the brave things. Yeah, because you've done. I mean, you've done the big, the big move a couple of times. I mean, you moved from South Africa to England, and then from England, England to France. back to South Africa, from South Africa to France, from France to Canada. Yeah, I've done it a few times. Yeah, so so, so that's got a yeah, and you know, I don't. People often say to me, "Oh, that's really brave of you to have done all this." And I'm like, "Yeah, oh, I suppose so." <laughs> Is really what I kind of feel, mm-hmm. and I don't feel like any of them felt brave at the time for me it felt like there was no choice it was what I was doing and what I wanted to do so it kind of everything granted it was very smooth for me for the most part moving Um, when I moved to France for example I didn't really think I was being brave that in particular you know if I thought about it it would have been brave but I was moving to France for love so it was like I'm just going to go and do this thing But I didn't really think that it was going to be culturally different, that I'd have to learn a whole new language. 
and like all the other things, learn to drive because I didn't drive before I moved to France. So I learned to drive on the wrong side of the road in another language with a six month old. So it, you know, like I really, that was for me, that was brave. <laughs> That's brave. I, yeah, I had no choice, but it was brave. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. how old were you when you when you moved to France? Because we did, we haven't actually chatted about that. Yeah. Um, well, I left South Africa when I was 26 and I went to the UK for a couple of years. And that's where I met my boyfriend who became husband. Um, and so I guess I was there for a couple of years before my visa ran out and they said, thank you very much. Goodbye. Um, and then I went back to South Africa for nine months. And then we kind of decided that wasn't working so well. And my husband had moved to to France, where he's originally from, to Paris, actually. And he said, come live in Paris. And, you know, what's a girl got to do? Right? Exactly. So I went, okay. Especially yeah. Paris. Especially Paris. I was like, what's the worst that can happen, right? So I can have this amazing adventure and be with somebody I love. Um, and all the other stuff is kind of like, it falls into place. You make it work, right? Whatever it is. So, yeah, I was, so I was probably... I guess I must have been 29 or 30, or just 30 when I moved. Yeah. And also, I suppose, you know, I don't, I, I don't know, we can we can unpack this, but, you know, when you're in your 20s, you know, I got married at 24, had my daughter 25, well, I, I think I just turned 26, my first daughter. Um, left my husband by the time I was 30, 30 got divorced by the time I was 31 I had two small children at that point had already started my own business etc cetera, etc cetera. whole life yeah yeah you know let's let's just pack it all in Get it over. <laughs> felt a bit like that um but all of those those decisions those choices those actions there was there was no real thought about consequence. You know, I never thought I'm going to get married and this is how it's going yeah. to play out. You know, this is, you know, you kind of get married and you you, you wish and hope that it, it works and it lasts forever and that it's good and all of those things. Um, but you don't, you know, you don't think, the, think about the consequences. And then you have a baby at the age of 25 and you don't think about the consequences of yeah. that either it's just a baby you know how hard could it be a shock. Yeah. And, and somebody could have told you how hard it's going to be but you know you don't listen just words. Huh. you're kind of like oh well that was your experience it's not going to be mine mm -hmm. right yeah mm -hmm. um yeah and, you know and then even leaving my husband and getting divorced and all that, I never really unpacked the consequences of that of like what is this going to look like and how am I going to do all of this and how am I going to raise two children on my own and there was no thinking but now making making this move to Canada at nearly 50 um it's different because it's it's you know you're older you've got a little bit more jaded a little bit more experience a little bit more understanding of actually there are consequences to your actions and there are consequences to your choices and you have to live them out yeah and I think so did it, you spend a long time thinking about those things before you made the move no <laughs> no I when you know you know yeah you know, I, I I did think about okay, the con you know, the long term consequences are I'm leaving my children behind, I'm leaving everything I know behind. But I was coming to a country that um I had been to before. I've got my dad here, I've got family mm -hmm. here. You know, so it wasn't foreign. And it, unlike you, I didn't move to a country where I have to learn another language. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm on the west coast. I'm on the yeah the, the other side where I'm the might have to French. Yeah um yeah so it, it's and and I mean you've only recently moved to Canada you've been in Canada what four or five years so, yeah we moved seven years ago okay. yeah yeah and did you and officially became a citizen this morning yeah congratulations <laughs> perfect timing for the podcast yeah welcome to yeah. Canada <laughs> but, got me, but it's, it's got me really reflecting on what is it you know what does identity mean and what does it mean to change countries and what does it mean, you know, 
it's really it, it adds to you as a whole I think to to live in another country and to have another experience and to it doesn't take away from anything it's not that I'm no longer South African it's not that I no longer have my contact uh, you know, I lived in France for 14 years it's not doesn't mean that that is null and void and didn't exist you know it wasn't part of who I am anymore but it just adds you know so enriching you know? mm. yeah it is it's a, it, it is an interesting um I haven't actually really thought about it because <clears throat> I've always you know claimed my South Africanness, yeah and be proud to be a South African and I love South Africa. I love the country. You know, I didn't. Mm. Leave, I, didn't I didn't leave for those reasons, you know, or reasons of not liking or not enjoying the people or the country. I mean, obviously, I don't like the, the politics, but mm, politics everywhere is is yeah. your roots are your roots, right? Yeah, and yeah. and I left for many other reasons, but it's it's. I've always had a British passport as well, so I've always had that ability to be quite free in how I move when I travel mm -hmm. etc et and I do have Canadian citizenship although I haven't claimed it I'm obviously in the process of claiming it um I, I've never I, yeah you know it's like yeah you know, how do you how do you who do you identify as and what do you identify as and and actually, it doesn't really make any difference. I mean, it's, you know, no. just an easy thing. You know, I need to have citizenship in order to live in this country. I need to be able to have a bank account and do all of those practical things. Yeah. Does it change? It's more of a practical decision. But yeah. it, that also kind of made me think of, um, and I guess that's the privilege part, right? We we made this choice. Yeah. We weren't forced to flee our homes or any of those situations, right? So we decided you know for whatever reason to move to another country mm. and we were able to just go and do it mm. and I think you know part of it is a mindset thing and uh and you know I guess some of it is kind of I feel like some of it is being decided anyway right I always when I was younger I always knew I was going to live in another country it wasn't really a, a surprise to me when I landed up living in a foreign country but you know some people don't have those choices and that's a whole different yeah mm. whole different kettle of fish yeah especially for those who are forced to flee you know they're right. you know that 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 is something that's taken from them whereas we're talking about something that we've gained you know whether it's yeah citizenship or gaining an, an aspect of our identity that we wouldn't have gained if we had stayed in South Africa yeah and it doesn't feel like a gain and a loss whereas for some people it's a gain and a loss that are connected and I think that's you know, the difference for us anyway yeah I know when I lived in France because the culture was so different to my own um and unexpectedly so for me you know I I'd, I'd lived in the UK for two years and it felt fairly similar and familiar and I guess part of that is the language as well um when I moved to France, I did not think it was going to be such a shock to the system. <laughs> and it really took me a good few years. And I always had the feeling of having one foot in, in either country when I lived in France. And I think that um, now that I've moved to Canada, I don't feel that kind of disconnect anymore. So I think language is a very big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Although, yeah, I mean, I must say for me, I, don't, I definitely don't feel like I've got one foot in South Africa. I feel like I've yeah. got my feet very firmly planted here. Um, yeah. But processing the difference between South Africa and what I've always known and coming to Canada, although the, the, the language sounds the same. Yeah. The there are a lot of differences. Not necessarily the same. Um, and, but everything is different here. You know, it, it, yeah. everything is different. And I think that, you know, the first month I was shattered. Every day yeah. was, there was just so much newness that I was having to process and yeah. absorb and trying to orientate myself in a new space, orientate where I am. Um, it, yeah, it was, it was overwhelming. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to even put your 
finger on exactly what it is that's different, right? It's lots of little things. Yeah, yeah. It and it, but it is the little things. You know, yeah. it's, big things are different. You you accept the big things are different. Yeah. I mean, in a different country, but yeah. it's the small things that are overwhelming. It's it's you know going to the grocery store and, um, you know, trying to find food that is familiar. Yeah, the labels are all different. Yeah, you know, and it's like, I I just want to find a, um, you know, what what I'm trying to think of, like a what 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 we would call a um. Oh man, a courgette. Oh yeah, a zucchini. <laughs> zucchini. I mean, yes, I know it's a zucchini and other you know other places, but in yeah. South Africa, it's not. It's a courgette. I spent ages. I spent ages once looking for coriander. It's what? called cilantro here. <laughs> yeah, so it's the small things of trying to figure yeah. it out of of like what 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 do we what do we call things. Yeah. And, you know, I've I've got an uncle who is Canadian, so yeah, I talk to him and I I use my South African slang, and there's just this blank. I have a really funny story about that. Can I tell that? Yeah, go so ahead. My, my son, when we moved here, he was in grade five and going into grade six. And at the beginning of every every year, you get a list of school supplies that you need to go and buy. You know, some pens and paper and. Very often they add things like Kleenex or, you know, paper roll or anything. And on this list were earbuds. And so, <laughs> yes, you know where this is going, right? <laughs> and I looked at this list and I looked at this list and I was like, this is really weird, but why do they want me to give to him to take earbuds? I mean, are they going to sit and clean their ears in class? I can understand Kleenex. I can understand paper towel, but earbuds. Um, and, you know, my son nearly went into middle school with a pack of 500 Q-tips. If I hadn't spoken to one of my Canadian friends, that's what he would have done. So, yes, sometimes it can be quite hilarious. I mean, the poor child, middle school with a box of five, with 500 Q-tips, that just would have been like hell. Mortifying. <laughs> Mortifying, yeah. Yeah, lots of stories like that. It's not for the faint-hearted. No, it's not. I mean, it 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 really isn't for the faint-hearted. And and I'm, I must say, I you know, I, I think la my much of last year was taken up with packing uh packing up and selling and getting rid of everything yeah. and the practical parts of of moving a country. And I, you know, I mm -hmm. I. Can, I, I literally ar arrived here with three suitcases. There were, you know, there How long did it take you from making the decision to come to to actually arriving? Cut along. You know, it, it had always been in the back of my mind. It was something that I'd wanted to do in 2011. Um, but or maybe even 2000 earlier than that. <clears throat> but it just wasn't possible my my children were too little and my ex-husband wasn't going to let me take them out of the country so I kind of put it on the back burner and um forgot about it almost of like you know this is where I am this is where I have to be and made the best of it um and I think when I think I think my my youngest daughter started in grade nine or ten no it must have been nine grade nine and I, I don't know what happened but I woke up one day and I suddenly realized that I could see the end of school mm -hmm. I see the end of dropping children at school and collecting children from school and instead of getting sad and depressed about it I suddenly got really excited because I thought there is an end to this and and a new um, beginning. And a new beginning for me. You know, this yeah. is <laughs> never mind what my daughter's going to be able to oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's her that's her life. There's actually yeah. there's there's something beyond this for yeah. me. And and yeah, it was suddenly my vision had been quite closed and suddenly everything expanded and opened. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to my my kids, you know, I I, I just want to prepare you, you know, I, I really do think I'm gonna leave the country at some point when you guys have finished school and 
they were like, yeah, 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 you've spoken about this. You've spoken about, you know, they just brushed me off. <laughs> and, you know, so I it, it, it started then. Um, so that was, what, five, six years ago. And then I, I, I really started feeling the pull to to come you know there's 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 a lot of reasons I'm in Canada it's 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 um it's not just a personal choice it's a, a soul calling and that calling just got louder and louder and louder and I just couldn't couldn't ignore it anymore um and initially I did think I would end up in the UK because I had a brother there um but sadly he took his own life in in 2020 and after spending six weeks in the UK sorting out um his his life and and packing up his life and and his funeral and all of that I just I just realized I can't live I can't live there it wasn't your place no it wasn't my place and and you know the he was the reason I would have been there and he was no longer there and mm -hmm. yes nieces and uh, niece and nephew nephews there um which I who I adore but I can't um you know they yeah I don't know what they're going to be doing with their lives and uh so I, I realized the UK was off the cards and um my dad's been in Canada for a long time so there was you know okay well maybe it's Canada and yep it definitely is Canada it was Canada and I of course I dove into all the intuitive stuff of like is this gonna work is it gonna be worth it I'm not uprooting my entire life I've created a life here I've got a good life here now I'm gonna pack it all up and I'm gonna chuck myself over to and the, to the other side of the world and you know so I dove into that had an astrological reading in fact there is a podcast that I did with with Ronnie who um did the planetary line so she looks at where your um astrology is is in relation to place super so, interesting yeah, it's fascinating so i got her to look at you know canada and particularly vancouver um what we're about an hour outside of vancouver yeah. this area um and uh it looked really good i mean literally I, while she was doing it on the podcast i was like okay stuff that i'm packing my bags now i'm leaving tomorrow i'm getting out of cape town this is not my place. Time to go. And that so question. Yeah. Question. So, if, she, if she said that it wasn't your place, would you still have come? Yes, because there's something I have to do here. Yeah. If this would have been the place that I would have ended up living in, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yes, I would have still come because uh, you know there's there's ancestral stuff that that needs to be that that yeah. needs to be addressed. So she was just confirmation for you. Yeah, she, yeah, she was confirmation. It was it was you know I I I I, I wanted an adventure. I wanted to go and live somewhere. I wanted to leave home before my children left home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the one had already gone. But save your heart. Gone. Save your heart. <laughs> already had my heart broken by the first one leaving I couldn't do another one so I left <laughs> leave me <laughs> wise move yeah I thought it was taking notes I thought it was very clever to do that mm -hmm. um and yeah so I, I yeah I I think I, I would have still come I don't know mm. whether it would have been the place that I called home yeah but it depended on what she had said was home yeah. And it, it's, it, when she, when she does the astrology, it's not, um, it, you know, there's not only one place in the world that is, right. good. you know, there are many places in the world that are good for you. So you can give her a couple of options, but I I just gave her, thank uh, you. Wanted to be. Yeah, I didn't I didn't give her another option, um, because that's what you know that was it that was what I was feeling called to and uh yes and and that was that must have been January last year so okay. yeah. from then things started you know that was it I sat down with my kids and we had a very serious conversation around it and um they were both incredibly supportive of like you know this is what oh, you're wonderful. Yeah. yeah that you must know, have been a relief too yeah, yeah. You know, they they were really supportive. You know, this is this is your time. You need to have a life. You need to have an adventure. You need to, 
which was great because yeah. um, you know I, I have literally devoted 24 years of my life to my children and mm -hmm. um, sure I've done other things and work and all that sort of stuff but you know they've been yeah. my primary focus and and to have that to realize I have two incredibly stable children who are able to let me go um yeah was was yeah was was amazing um, but also like you I also had that feeling that I would never live in South Africa forever you know it was never yeah, yeah. yeah. but you know it's that for me it's also like I can't imagine staying in one place in one town one city or one village for my whole life and there are people who do that mm. but you know I just love the exploring and meeting new people with new ideas and different energy. And I think we all have connections to different countries as well. And, mm. you know, to have that opportunity to go and explore that mm. inwardly and outwardly, I think it's just so valuable. And to, so to, 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 tell me a little bit more about your work. I mean, I, I know that you do the counseling, you do reflexology, yeah. you do some energy work. I mean, how's that been here? Yeah, so when I was into France and so yeah, so I started that. I started my practice in France, and I, yeah, I've been a Reiki practitioner for twenty five odd years, and um, not always professionally, but um, it was not something that was really um, welcome, shall we say, in France. So I lived in a very small village in the southwest of France near the Pyrenees Mountains, which is all very beautiful and old and magical. Um, but um, I found that anything a little bit kind of, let's say, woo-woo yeah. was not really, you know, very welcomed. Um, and I did study reflexology because I thought that was like a little bit more scientific and it would be a little bit more accepted. But, you know, I literally got called a witch. <laughs> So no, and which is really interesting because France is so steeped in tradition and steeped in, you know, traditional healing as well. You know, you've got your healers who are known, village healer who who heals warts or burns or, you know, like all these things. And but something like Reiki or any kind of energy healing is just it's it's seen as almost evil, right? So yeah, it was it was a very interesting, very tough experience because I really had to fight my way to, you know, I had my clientele, but it was very, very limited. Um, and I had to constantly prove that it worked. So it was, you know, it was a it was exhausting. Yeah. And then so coming to Canada where, you know, these things are just so widely accepted, it was just like, oh, here I am and you know I feel totally in the right place and you know coming from South Africa with you know people are very open spiritually to traditional healers to healing of all different kinds it was very hard to then live in a place where those kind of things weren't accepted in France and a huge relief and um yeah just it did like a weight off my shoulders I guess being here and being able to do what I love yeah and feel free to do it without having And feel to. free, yeah, totally. And not have to constantly explain myself or not talk about it or hide it or you know, which is just yeah. One of one of the reasons why we left trans was that was one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did you get into it? How did you get into the alternative healing field? Um I do well, I guess Reiki Reiki, so I I did I probably did my Reiki one when in about 95, 94, 95, I'd gone through that kind of um, dark, dark night of facade. <laughs> yeah. That's the only you way to say it. One? Come on. I've had about. <laughs> no, no. Did I say that? No, no. Okay. <laughs> this good. was one big, you know, the early 20s one. Yeah. That first one. <laughs> that first one. <laughs> Crash course. Yeah, if you um, don't count teenagehood being a dark night of the soul. Oh, yeah, no, but that's just, yeah, oh, gosh. No, that was coming out of it, I guess, <laughs> dealing with that long period. Yeah. But, um, 
yeah so you know I, 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 I was seeing a, a therapist at the time and she suggested I read a book by Carolyn Miss called Anatomy of the Soul mm -hmm. and then I started reading Louise Hay as well so those kind of and then I, I was working for a psychologist at the time um, called Marlene de Villiers and she invited me to a, like a Reiki workshop that she was hosting and I went sure that sounds really cool because I was totally you know um, open to, to everything and that was like oh this is my thing and it totally like Reiki one just it changed my world totally like everything became simpler I could see everything clearer I could see the connections between all the things um, it was just yeah my life changed totally all the people that I you know I was associating with that were part of my dark night of the soul I was just like yeah you're out of here and it was easy and simple and clear so that's where I started um, and then I did my Reiki too about a year later and then yeah then I moved to London and that was a different experience because then you know I was just there for the fun yeah the fun and exploring <laughs> So I don't think I practiced much Reiki during that time, very little. Yeah. You did a whole lot afterwards. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And so then, you know, it took me a while when I moved to France afterwards to, to pick everything up again. Um, I lived in Paris for a couple of years and got, you know, we were made, my husband and I were made redundant in that time and we got this massive payout and we were able to choose what we wanted to do. And he chose one path and I chose like, oh, reflexology, that sounds cool. Nobody had ever touched my feet. Nobody had ever worked on me in any way that way, but I just knew. And so I went to the UK to do it um, and because it was the best school to do it at. So I went and I did that and then I just set up my own practice. And because I was a, you know, a mother with young children or young child at that time, it was really helpful for me to be able to choose my hours and work in something that I really love, but also be flexible. Yeah. And just kind of grew from there. But it's really been since I've been in Canada that it's really, you know, kind of what I am in my space now. Yeah. And I've picked up my Reiki practice. And so, you know, I say Reiki, but it's, you know, it's a word. <laughs> energy yeah. healing. Yeah. Energy yeah. healing. Yeah. No, I know. I know. Yeah. It's interesting because the first um, kind of alternative therapy I ever did was reflexology. Oh, yeah. A friend of mine, um, kind of suggested I was going to say made me she didn't yeah she, she suggested that I go and see this woman in Cape Town and I must have been about 19 yeah and, uh, she did reflexology so I said well you know what's reflexology she said, no no she just fiddles with your feet and then she tells you anything about yourself oh gosh it's like I'm in yeah so off yeah. I went. and uh yeah I mean of course she she did the reflexology that I, 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 I can't tell you a single thing it was nice but I can't yeah. tell you a single thing about the reflexology because I was far more focused on what was coming out of and all the rest yeah, yeah. You know, what she was telling me about myself and where I was going and what I was going to be doing with my life and what my future was going to look like and yeah she sounded yeah. like a sounds like a bit of a foot reader yeah she, she was yeah. she was incredible she she yeah. really was I I I mean the things she said what that that's like you know 30 what how old am i <laughs> odd years ago a while ago a while ago um yeah i mean those those things happened yeah. you know amazing yeah and you remember them which is very cool as well you yeah, well they they were so out of my realm of experience that i i, I couldn't forget them um yeah you know she she told me i'd be doing this work and she told me, I'm, yeah. you know, and it was like, what? No. I'm going into the corporate world. Uh -huh. in the corporate ladder. But it stayed in the back of your mind. Yeah, well, you know, when the retrenchment started, when the retrenchment started and, you know, the, 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 the corporate career started, I started tipping uh, off the ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Thing, you know. How did you get into what you, your work? Like, what was the um I'd always been obviously like you you know kind of interested in in spirituality and and alternative healing and all those all these lovely things but 
um as i said i was climbing the corporate ladder and mm -hmm. and then i fell pregnant um with chloe my eldest and that kind of changed things you know it it felt like something opened up in me while i was pregnant with her and i started accessing a part of myself that i'd never been in contact with well actually that's that's not necessarily true i'd been in contact with it but i'd shut it down <clears throat> when i i mean as a child i i could see things feel things i knew things i had a continual conversation with with god and my guides and um and that continued right up until I was about 17, 16, 17. And I, I don't know why, maybe I'm just blonde, but I didn't realize that everyone else couldn't Could see what I could see, oh, couldn't why? hear what I could hear, couldn't get things like I could get. And I don't know why it took me so long to start having conversations with people, but I would say things like, Oh, can you hear that? You know, I think that, that sounds like alien ship landing or some something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or, you know, can you see that weird light around that person? Or, you know, and people are like, what drugs are you taking? <laughs> oh, we cannot see them. What are you talking about? Oh, it's just Kate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's so weird. Um, <laughs> and I think. Away with the fairies. Yeah. Well, they do. I think I was too. I, I think they were quite scared of me because I was oh. quite an angry teenager. So <laughs> was this airy fairy? I was pretty, uh. I was pretty hardcore. Um, <laughs> and then on the top of it, you know, seeing weird things and hearing weird yeah. things. And I, I so I, because I, you know, you're a teenager. You just want to be like everyone else. You don't want to yeah. stand out. You don't want to be different. Be, yeah. yeah. And I, I remember consciously going that this is this is enough now. I can't do this anymore. Um, and I consciously shut it down and actually got quite sick as a result of it. I I got um the that's when I got the Epstein Var virus and encephalitis and the yeah, there was oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, three or four months of just being completely man down. Um did you understand? I guess at the time you probably didn't understand what it was about. I mean, you know, yeah, I was sick. You know, okay, I've got to be off school for three or four months. Oh well, that's yeah. cool. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it was obviously only in hindsight, and once I was much older, that I was able to yeah. look at that time and go, oh, <laughs> that's what that was. What it was mm, okay. Hey, a note yourself don't shut down ever again you get sick and that's why it's so important to have adults in your life that you can talk like teens can talk to or to talk to teens in a way where they are able to talk about that stuff right yeah well that that's the thing is that i i didn't have anyone you know it, I, I i tried to say and people just thought i was weird you know with like yeah. you know what are you talking about and I think, you know, my family dynamic, there was such crisis and, and turmoil and shit basically going on that, you know, I was never going to go to my parents and say, oh, just by the way, my entire life, I've heard voices and seen things and seen. Yeah, things. they would have thrown drugs at the problem or. Exactly. Yeah. I would have been, you know, pulled off to the mental, mental home. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so then in my twenties, being pregnant with Chloe, you know, this stuff started opening up and, and I mean, bizarrely enough, my ex-husband bought me my first pack of tarot cards. And <laughs> so I was pregnant. I was busy playing with tarot cards and doing readings for my mates and, you know, telling everyone their future and fortunes. Um, and, and then when I had her, um, yeah, that, that was, you know that was like a that was being hit by a ton of bricks um you know this this realization the realization of i mean it was a bit late you know like shit i've actually had a baby I'm actually, <laughs> wow it's a shocking thing i'm sorry yeah, it, was, it was a horrifying moment in the how hospital. the hell did this happen <laughs> looking at this little thing yeah. going i actually have to keep this thing alive you know that this is yeah. now this is all on me yeah um and then at the same time this this huge realization about my own relationship with my mother and yeah the 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 the, the damage and the, the the stuff that had that had happened and the consequences of that and 
what it felt like and what it what it was for me mm-hmm. and I suddenly realized that if I didn't do something dramatic I was going to end up damaging this perfect mm-hmm. human you know I, I was going to I was going to damage her you know let alone what the world was going to do to her I was going to do, do, do that to her so that kind of kick-started a whole shift in me and then um of course you look at the world and you think no 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 my child is not going to be brought up in this world i'm going to change it i'm going yeah. to be different it's got to be a different world for my child we are not doing this <laughs> so, yeah picked up Thanks. the trade of you know okay i'm going to change the world all on my own um of course i didn't and um well i think to differ yeah. everybody does might, their little bit changed, right yeah i might have changed reality for my children which is which yeah. is yeah but um yes and then i i i mean of course i was, I was like 25 26 i don't know what that what i was doing i mean I, I shouldn't have been even having a baby if i you know if i think about it and i didn't really know where to go what to turn and and in, in those days there was no internet um we didn't have access to the things that we have access to today in fact there was internet i lie it had just come out you know it was yeah. like, in fact i not, lived not about, super accessible like, internet let's say. yeah i mean in fact i lived next door to the guy one of the guys who you know brought the internet to south africa um yeah, yeah. And he, uh, so, you know, there, there wasn't access to too much information and, and I didn't really know where to go to learn how to be a different mother, to be a different mm. person. So I was grappling with all of this internal stuff that was going on, which was just chaotic and messy. And it was, yeah. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if that, um, like not having the internet and not having all of those things accessible meant that you had to turn inward more and kind of make it up you know what I mean rather than taking somebody else's idea of whatever yeah I, no because I didn't have that internal connection you know I'd shut it down so I didn't yes it was opening up but I wasn't I wasn't listening and I wasn't consciously tapping in I I was just in the, yeah whirlpool of feeling and emotion and and then of course you have everyone going, oh, well, you're suffering from postnatal depression and you need to go and see a psychiatrist and you need to go to a psychologist. And you need to go to a support group and, you know, and feeling desperate because, of course, I, I don't want to destroy my child psychologically. Yeah. I, OK, I'll do whatever it takes to feel better and to start feeling stable. And so I went down that whole route and went on on medication and saw the psychiatrist and loathed the therapist but I went and and uh, <clears throat> went to the support group once and you had to sign an agreement that you wouldn't leave I went once and I broke that agreement I was like there's no <laughs> going back there sorry can't do it um, <laughs> and obviously because it, none of it felt right you know it I was doing these things but no, nothing felt yeah. right. I was starting to work with my feelings of what was felt yeah and then when Chloe was about a year old, um, a friend of mine suggested I go and see an energy healer. So I was like, you know, anything, give it to me. And off I went and she was like, introduced me to the concept of indigo children, which I'd never yeah. met, and told, you know, sent me off to go and read a whole lot of things and then explained to me that I had been going through the the, this massive spiritual awakening and that it was I was very young to be going through it and um but you know you once it starts you can't exactly stop it no. um you can't put it back in the box <laughs> no you know you, you can try but yeah good luck yeah and yeah so it's I, I I I saw her I think once a month for a long time um how did it feel when you heard her say that how did you receive it yeah such relief you know just the relief of going this feels that this feels right you know this information this there was something in me that just went okay oh yeah thank you yeah thank you thank you for explaining 
the crazy that yeah. is happening inside yeah. of you. Um, and yeah, so then I did a whole lot of research into indigo children. I was like, okay, well, you know, she, cause then she said, well, your daughter's one too. So, you know, so they, uh, yeah, deep dive into all of that. And by this point, the internet is, I don't think we had Google, but I don't know. We had search engines and I could find stuff. And there was a lot of stuff in the States about indigo kids. And, and so I started talking to people all over the world and, and, um, and then I started writing about indigo children and and parenting indigo children as as an indigo child myself being parented in a way that didn't serve me is like how do we parent these kids in a way that does serve them so I started writing about all of that and then fell pregnant with my second child and went through another whole shift and it's, yeah that just did you feel more prepared no I was terrified of her <laughs> No, I was pretty scared of her. Um, she, yeah. When, so when I was pregnant with her, I was more prepared in the sense that I was I was going for regular energy work. Um, so spiritually, I was preparing myself for this for this child. I was doing yoga. I was eating better. I was looking after myself. So I was way more prepared in that sense. And, but I was also tapping into. Um, and and channeling and now channeling information and things and and one of the things that I, I was doing with the woman who I was seeing for energy healing was um, tapping into Christ consciousness and tapping mm -hmm. into things outside of this realm of what we can touch and see and feel in ways that I had never done before. And I look back on it now and I just put my head in my hand and think that was so dangerous from a spiritual perspective, from a physical yeah. perspective, because, yeah, I had no idea what she was doing. And I, and I, yeah, she knew what she was doing. Well, she at least was putting me in situations that mm, I shouldn't have been going into anyway. Yeah. But, um, a bit like, you know, going into places where angels fear to trade. Yeah. Yeah. And one of yeah, the. You have, to, you have to have somebody who knows you know is experienced to take it on that kind of path yeah I, I, yeah I, I'm still uh, you know I, I don't know I it, it, it you know I look back on it now and I just think oh that was so dangerous and you know I must have some pretty pretty strong protection to have kept me safe in that time. Oh, yeah. yeah but anyway in this time I connected to this Christ consciousness and the power that it holds and realized that this consciousness was what the consciousness that my child was, my ba my new baby that was coming, carried. Yeah, and that was pretty scary. Um, just because of the, the enormity of that power. Um, responsibility. Responsibility of now being a parent to one of these kids. Mm. And, yeah, and and... You know, even though I already had a daughter, you know, she was very different. I mean, both my kids are, they're very different. Um, yeah, so it it was quite overwhelming, but it it fueled the sense of purpose of got to change the world for these children, you know. Like, yeah. And in fact, it wasn't even just for my kids. It was for all kids. It was, you know, I don't, I don't want any kid to grow up like I did with this confusion yeah. of like, what's real, what's not real. I feel this, but I see that. Yeah, um, you know, so that, many you know, kids grow up like that, so many. Know, yeah, because yeah. most of what we see, the facade of what people put out there is such bullshit. You know, it's mostly yeah. lies. So you you feel this and you see mm -hmm. what's happening and you're like, well, this feeling doesn't match. It doesn't, what curve, no, it doesn't match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's just so much confusion, and 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 know, then you turn yeah. to the adult who will tell you what you're supposed to be thinking or whatever, and so you adjust. Yeah, right. and, and so then you 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 tap out. You know, you tap yeah. out of that intuitive space. That you tap out, and you think you've then got to become something or yeah. someone in order to yeah. fit in, to be accepted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, which is all bullshit. You know, we should be. You know, we need to parent our children. And say, well, this is this is a soul that is incarnated into this physical form, and I need to see the soul of this child and help that soul to emerge within 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 this reality. 
not yeah. you know this is a child that i now need to fill with beliefs and programming and conditioning yeah. etc cetera, et cetera. it's you know all of that and yeah so i went on a bit of a rampage about how things needed to be different and was writing and posting stuff everywhere yeah. Yeah, it was going all over the all over the world at this point. Yeah. And then uh went on radio and TV and suddenly had hundreds of people phoning me and asking me for help. And of course, um but at this point, 28, 27, 28. All just coming at you. No idea what I'm doing, quite frankly. No idea. So I like you. Reiki. Oh, I can do that. Yeah yeah then at least yeah, it, it, it has it's contained right yes, it, has, yes. it has rules it's a way to do it it's yeah it's contained the good old conditioning from the western yeah world. yeah totally need to do something and you need to have a qualification to do it so off i yeah. went I did, paper. yeah my certificate yeah i went and did reiki one i didn't do the rest i just did one and yeah uh, yeah that yeah that just blew that connection that inner connection open yeah and I uh, tapped into that part of myself that I shut down when I was 17 and yeah it all just all just started from there and well yeah and at the same time again you know like I think I'm a bit nuts but in the best kind of way oh. <laughs> 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 Yeah, maybe just immature. <laughs> um, but you know, there I was working with people, you know, yeah. energy energy working, I was doing readings, I was doing whatever, whatever I could to help them. And no boundaries, none, 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 none whatsoever. Um, wide open to everything. Yeah. And four years a learning was, process. <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, three or four years later, I wake up one day and go, I, you know, at this point, I've now left my husband, I've gone through a divorce, I've got two small children, it's, life is just hectic, and I wake up one day and I think, I don't know where I am, I, I don't, I, I don't know where, I, I don't know who I am, I don't know where I am, and so off I went searching for someone to help me find myself again, um, and came across, um, native american shamanism okay and so did a deep dive into into what they call the red road and uh followed the shamanic path of of healing myself and got all the tools that i needed to to help me when i'm working with others and yeah and that now i'm here yeah and you know there's that that part where the natural gifts that you have or that one has and that kind of um, intention of healing being part of it but there is a part the training is still important I mean we know I know we're saying you know you've got to have that certificate but there is training and expertise and mentorship and all that stuff that is so important because you need to learn about the boundaries you need to learn about the ethics you need to understand and you can't do that on your own. No, but also, you know, if you think back to, you know, when we lived as as tribes and and real communities, yeah. you know, there would be elders and there would be, yeah, be people, natural mentors and guides that would yeah. that see the potential in a a child that was deeply connected and say, yeah. you know, that that child, there's something going on there. We need to guide that child, otherwise. Yeah. You know, they're exactly. going to get lost or the consequences, they're going to lose their mind, they're going to become a whole lot of things. And we don't have that in our world anymore. You know, we don't exactly have, right. yeah. We don't have guides, we don't have mentors from that, that that are looking out to see who are these special kids that No, we have to go and look for those mentors. Yeah, exactly. You know, so so if I'd had someone as a kid saying to me, Well, you know, it's perfectly normal for you to, you know, be hearing things and seeing things and it's a gift and da, 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 you know instead mm. i just thought it was normal <laughs> i was 17 and realized i oh, know you just weird um, <laughs> but but you know also um i mean one, one of the things that 
for me is so incredibly beautiful is I, I I have worked a lot with kids with with babies and and you know toddlers and then <laughs> all the way up till they you know big kids in their 20s and um some of them I've known you know from little until they they get to their 20s and one of the things that is so amazing was so amazing for me to see is that these kids would walk into my therapy room and there would be no fear no anxiety no like what am I doing here whatever there would just be this exhale of like oh it's real it's actually yeah. it exists because in that, yeah. you know in my space all that stuff existed you know that yeah. the, it's here this and they are now sitting with someone who gets it yeah. Um, yeah and it's sad because we 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 if if we if we you and I, for example, grew up, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, we would have been guided through our lives, or you know, instead of waking up in our thirties and going, oh shit, I need I need help, I need someone to tell me what yeah, what's, what's going, going on. on. Yeah. I, I need don't yeah, and the people who don't understand what's going yeah. on and think yeah. they really are literally going crazy. Exactly. And how many mm. people do we know that 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 you know have yeah. incredible gifts that are then diagnosed as being psychotic or schizophrenic yeah. bipolar or wh whatever it is Lots of things yeah um and i'm not saying that those illnesses are not necessarily real i'm just saying that you know a lot of the time it's these deeply we don't understand them 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. and so i agree with you you know training and and mentorship is vital if you are stepping yeah. into this work because you can lose yourself yeah and the consequences of that loss it's not just a psychological thing it's a soul loss it's yeah and that you know going you know circling back to being in France as well that was what I was lacking there as well because I didn't have those connections and you know mentors can be in friendships as well you learn from each other as well and I didn't have or I had very few you know people around me that I could connect to in that way Definitely and, how, not mentor. and how's that changed here I, well, I think my expectation was already when I got here that I would meet the people. So I think that in France, I had that expectation of it's not going to happen here. So I don't think I even attracted that. Okay. Whereas coming to Canada, it's been like, I know that, you know, people exist that think maybe that I, the way that I do was similar. We can, you know, so I've attracted those people totally. Yeah. I mean, you're one of them. So <laughs> You know, and I think that those kind of connections have been so much easier to make here. And also because I also feel like I'm in my place, right? So that also yeah. changes everything. And mm. when you when you're connecting, you know, that inner connection. Yeah. I'm always fascinated about how 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 it works for people. In you know, in how easy is it to do it here in comparison to to how how it was in France? I mean, because you you didn't feel in that supported environment, was it more difficult to make that that inner connection? Oh, totally. Yeah, I questioned myself all the time. So by questioning myself, I could never be still enough to be able to really connect. Yeah, and to trust what I was connecting to. Yeah. So there was that portion, and. I think I was always, in France, I was always somebody who was different. I was always an outsider. So I had, I tried really hard to fit in for most of the time that I was there, which meant that I was never, ever really being super authentic. So no, I couldn't connect there. Yeah. If you're not being authentic, you can't. No. Yeah. That is, yeah. So, oh, I hadn't thought yeah. about that. Also, when you so, you know, you, not only are you a foreigner, in a different country you you don't speak the language you you're not doing something weird that's considered yeah. different yeah I mean yeah. I was you know by the time I left I was completely and utterly fluent in French so a lot of people didn't even know that they could hear that I had a bit of an accent but they didn't know that I was but I was still an outsider because if I wasn't from the same town I was an outsider so no matter what I did, I was always exotic or different or I thought differently because I'd lived somewhere different and I'd seen different things. And that's the other thing about 
um, I think about Canada compared to say France is Canada is full of diversity from people from all walks of life from all different countries and cultures and beliefs and everything and I love that I feel like South Africa is like that as well you know there's a lot of diversity in what we believe and what we think and yes there have been issues with that in the past but I think on the whole people accept that people are different in South Africa and that's okay to be different in France it was not very acceptable to be different so when you move to France you're expected to become French but you can never become French if you 100% if you come from somewhere else yeah. whereas here you can be South African and Canadian in France it was French or nothing else so yeah I don't know where I was going with that but it was that whole thing of always being an outsider mm. and never quite being yourself because yeah. I don't think you can always 100% be yourself in another language, yeah. which I never really thought about, but and French I could is never easy language to learn when you speak. It's dreadful to learn. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I did I did a couple of years of French at school, and I always thought I yeah. could speak French, but I can't. It's, I'm useless. Yeah, I did it at school too. I thought I could speak French until I went to France. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. But I learned lots of, I learned a lot from that. I'm like digressing here, but I learned a lot from learning because there was also the part of me that didn't want to speak until everything was perfect. So um, like anything in life, you can't wait until you're perfect at it before you do it. And it took me a good five years before I would actually make imperfect sentences or try and express myself and be okay with making mistakes and learning from them it was a huge lesson yeah yeah but I often got laughed at for making mistakes and so that kind of shut it down as well so because it was such a learning experience don't want to do that again but it was a good experience yeah I mean some of these journeys we take ourselves on and we think oh but yeah. I mean, have to learn it that way yeah <laughs> But I mean, it's also it's also about learning to be yourself, right? So, what is yourself? And it's you know it brings all of those things into question. How do I connect to myself? How do I connect to something bigger than myself? How do I become authentic? All of those things. Yeah. And living in different cultures in different ways help you kind of think about those things in a different way. I think too. Yeah, I, I must say I. I... Uh, yes, South Africa is pretty open-minded and and mm. um, generally, but mm. I I still felt having grown up there that there's a certain expectation of how you should be, you know. Yeah. Particularly being a privileged white person. Oh, totally. Yeah. You know, there is this expectation. It's an unspoken expectation, but it's there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I didn't ever fit that mold either. You know, it was like I was for, forever falling out of it. <laughs> yeah. Or otherwise it just got too tight. Yeah. Uh, but but I felt the pressure of it. I felt the, the, the I felt the weight of that expectation of this is how you should be and why are you not? Yeah. And also I suppose family expectations of like this is how you should yeah. be living your life and why are you not? And why do you have to be different? And why do you always have to do everything differently? And and I, coming to Canada, that's all gone. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. have any of that. I don't, there's not this expectation. I don't, meeting anyone, there's no expectation of who I should be. There's this expectation, you know, there's just this question of who are you? Well, that's the freedom of living in another country, though, right? And moving somewhere else where nobody has any of that knowledge of you beforehand. You just are. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge freedom. Yeah. And you can step more into that space of being authentic. Yeah. Because it's like, I, I, don't, I don't, there are no labels here. You know? yeah. Um, yeah, it's that whole thing yeah, about I'm how... I'm sure they are, but they aren't for me because I'm yeah. not growing. Yeah, and maybe in 10 or 20 years' time yeah. of living here, maybe that's when that starts. But the freedom of change, you know, if we're all always staying in the same place, doing the same thing time, day after day after day with the same people, it's really hard to move. It's like heavy, like molasses. It's like, you know, so to change and to be authentic 
suddenly you be somebody or I don't know, you just feel like you're always fighting to be who you are in the same thing. But where you just make that change, it just becomes so much easier just to be. And do you think and do you do you think it's I mean the time that we're in in the world right now yeah. and how there is such a push for transformation. There is such a push for change. I mean, it's a cosmic universal push, planetary yeah. push. It's maybe not necessarily a societal push, but, yeah. um, you know, we are all being pushed to make these dramatic changes. And and how, what's your feeling about that? How do you feel it's, it's going? How do you think it's unfolding? Uh, uh, it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's going super fast. I mean, I it's difficult for me because I think I've grown up with change and change is very familiar to me. So I'm not afraid of change in any way, shape or form. And it's, I also think being a South African and growing up in such a st unstable yeah. economical, political, so societal yeah. environment means that we've learned to navigate. It just navigate and adapt and... Yeah. You just go with the flow, right? Yeah. Because yeah. that's what you can do. Your way through the flow. I, you just you just do it. Okay, I know this is where I'm going, and I'll figure it out along the way, right? And maybe I don't land up there. Maybe I land up somewhere else, but that's okay. Um, I realize not everybody's like that, which is you know, talking talking to people around me. Not everybody's like that. I've had friends that say to me, "Oh, I could never do that." You know, they've, they've been in the same job for twenty or thirty years, or lived in the same house for that amount of time and that's totally foreign to me so I think a lot of it is where we grew up mm -hmm. and how we grew up um yeah that helps us navigate through that and going yeah. through through this time this pandemic how was that yeah for you go with the flow yeah well go with the flow yeah, I don't, you know, I, I didn't really, I mean, obviously there were tough times through it. That's not to say that it's always easy, but it's just, it, you can't change some stuff, right? So sometimes you just have to go with the flow and see where it's going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's how I feel. Yeah. And sure, there's some stuff you need to stand up and fight it, you know, up against if that's, or, you know what's t you know kind of in your core and your role in the world but that's your way of going with the blur yeah and i think i, I don't think, know what do you think yeah i mean I, I i do i think that there are times where where we need to stand up and fight mm. what is right and 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 uh you know, growing up in South Africa, you know, we know what that what that feels yeah, like. Exactly. Look like. We, we, we yeah. know what wrong looks like. We're doing it, like. yeah. Yeah, we were doing it. We were living through it. Exactly. Um, but I do, I mean, I, I, I think that yeah, there's the change is happening so quickly right now. I don't I don't think we we even have time to judge it. No. You know, you you no. just you're just being taken by it. Um, okay. And we either just go with that flow or that current, yeah. or we try and swim against it. And quite frankly, the swimming against it is flipping exhausting. It never works. And I'm too it's old. Like a miserable that. life. I'm too old for that. No. <laughs> I'm just going to lie in the in the tide and, and let the current take me. Yeah. 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 And it's going to take us all in different directions too. Yeah, exactly. you know? global globally the same direction but individually different directions yeah yeah and of course it's individually it's going to look different for everyone you know they yeah. and how they perceive mm. it and and what they take from it it's going to be different but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm certainly one I'm, I'm very excited about it all um mm. I've, I, I've decided through all this I, I really do like change yeah mm. I don't necessarily like the process of change. It's pretty uncomfortable, but change is good. Change is good. Yeah, change is always good. What's always that? Good. Change, change is as good as a holiday. I'm not yes, sure. it's really, really <laughs> true. Permanent holiday that we're on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a hectic holiday. It's quite a hectic holiday. I just, I paid for an all-inclusive. What's this crap? 
<laughs> I paid to lie on the beach. I'm yeah. lying on no beach, yeah? <laughs> no, when I look out the window, that's definitely no beach with the snow coming down. <laughs> and I was quite excited to see it start snowing again. I hope that that uh, excitement at snow never, never, never leaves me. Yeah, it might a little bit. Mm, I'm hoping it doesn't. Quite like the snow. No. Very yeah. beautiful. Makes everything look beautiful, even though it really does. Yeah, we're lucky to live in a place where we don't have to have it for six months. So. Yeah, exactly. We can, we can love it for that amount of time. That it's yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with me and and chatting and yeah I, going forever yeah, we've explored all sorts all the of things today. <laughs> we started with brave but we that, that took us yeah. in a whole different direction well, yeah. we went with the flow exactly but this is what going with the flow looks like <laughs> well thanks for having me on it was a pleasure good and I'll, I'll i'll post some um links to your website and all that uh so Thank people you hold of you they can they can find that in the bottom uh in the post below the podcast um yeah so thank you thank you enjoy the snow thanks you too